Welcome back to VBTeacher.com for section 2 of the breakout project. In this part we'll be adding a bat to the project so the ball has something to hit. We hope you're enjoying this programming fun and continue to participate in VBTeacher.com. Thanks. Welcome back to part 2 of Visual uh, VBTeacher.com. Uh, day two or session two of our breakout project. Uh, in this part of the project we're going to be adding a, a, a small control to the bottom of the screen that you are going to have access to control at when you play the game. We're going to call it the, we could call it the paddle, but we're going to call it a shorter name because I like short names. We're going to call it the bat. So we've got a bat and a ball. It's like a baseball game. So down at the bottom of the screen then we're going to be adding a small button. Buttons are simple, they work well for this. Uh, we'll add a small button down to the bottom of the screen and uh, we want to make some property changes as we did last time. I'm going to turn off my toolbox and uh, check and make sure I've clicked on the button. Whatever you click on that's the properties you get. If I clicked on the ball here I would get the ball properties. Here I would get click on the form, I get the form properties. If I want to change the button properties I have to click on the button and I uh, get the buttons properties. Now the text I want on this button is none. So I'm going to take off the text. It now has no text and I'm going to change its name property uh, down here to bat, B-A-T. Now if you notice here there's actually at the top of the properties window there's two ways you can look at all these properties. If you're having trouble finding a property that I mentioned by name you can alphabetize these and there you can find the text property and the name property except the name property here is clear at the top. Uh, you can also do them by section and that's kind of my preference uh, but I've been using it a while and I remember when I couldn't find stuff now I kind of know which section to look in. Alright I'm going to close the properties page uh, section down now and uh, now we have a bat on the bottom of the screen. Now here's the plan. We could control this with the keyboard using some keys on the keyboard or we could control this with uh, our mind but we don't have a mind uh, paddle interface yet so we'll use the, the mouse and basically uh, we can read where the mouse is using a simple function and wherever the X coordinate, the left and right coordinate of the mouse is, we're going to put the center of the bat in the same place and so simply by putting the mouse on the screen and moving it back and forth we'll be able to control the bat. Now the event that happens whenever you move the mouse is amazingly enough called mouse move and uh, the way we get to that is uh, we can go into the form, we just go into the code and go up to the top and we can get into form one events and uh, down there somewhere is a thing called mouse move. There it is. So form one mouse move. I do not want uh, I do not want bat mouse move because then it would only move when I have the mouse on top of the control, the, the bat itself, but I want it on the in the form itself. So when it's on the form then it'll do this. Alright, so what I want to do whenever I move the mouse is to move the bat to a appropriate location based on the mouse. Now I can find out where the mouse is because it's in the it's given in this uh, near the top there's a, an argument up here by value sender as object comma by value e as system windows forms mouse event args arguments and this handles mouse move. So up here on the e uh, the E thing has a function in it and if I look here it just says E dot and it comes up with an X and E dot X is the horizontal location of the mouse. Okay, So now here's what I have to set. I'm going to pull in here a graphic that kind of illustrates the uh, settings of, the, uh, of this next section. Uh, here we see that we have the breakout game shown here. Uh, the form is shown and in this breakout game the inside coordinate of the black area excluding the borders at the top and the bottom and the left and the right this area where you can work is called a client rectangle and so the distance from the inside edge here of the black to the inside edge here of the black is the client rectangle width and this is the client rectangle height. Um, I have the bat sitting on the bottom of the form at the top of the bat is nearly at the as far down as the height of the rectangle, the client rectangle. Uh, the bat left and the bat right and the bat width can be accessed. Those are all properties of the bat. And the ball has a, the ball has a top and a bottom and a left and a width and a right. And it has a bunch of properties we can work with there. 
and basically then here's the plan we would like to take that e dot e dot x and uh, calculate it so that the center of the bat follows the location of the mouse and we'd like to have it so that the bat is correctly positioned near the bottom and uh, that's our next task so on the mouse move then we need to calculate those coordinates and uh, so we will set the uh, first of all let's set the width and the height of the uh, of the thing um, the bat dot width and we're going to set that to be a fraction of the screen width so if you make the screen bigger the bat gets a little wider and so the bat width will be equal to three tenths times uh, me dot client rectangle dot width so the bat width is three tenths of the client rectangle. Let's make the bat height again a fraction, uh, a very small fraction of the height. The bat height equals uh, 0.05, 5% or 5, 5 one hundredths of the client rectangle height. Alright, now we need to set the top, and so the bat top is equal to again 0.95, 95% of the height, so it'll fit there on the bottom times me dot client rectangle dot, dot height and the bat bottom equals point uh, whoops don't want the bat bottom I did the width and the height and the top I need to locate the left side of the bat well the left side of the bat if it's three tenths wide will be point one five left of the e dot x so bat dot left is equal to 0.15 which is related to the 0.3 up here it's half of that times me dot client rectangle dot, dot high, uh, width and what we want to do is take e dot x and subtract this quantity from it and we'll do the multiplication first I think it would do this but we'll use parentheses just to be safe so now in every we move the bat it's going to calculate these four numbers and position the bat based on the size and the shape of the screen and the location of the mouse so let's run it and see what happens so now I'm in the form and as I move the mouse back and forth no matter how high I am up the uh, the paddle or the bat on the bottom of the screen follows the mouse and that was the plan now notice when I get down on top of the mouse it doesn't work so you have to be somewhere within the black area for this to work. All right, very good. Now we need to uh, think about how to make it so that it knows when it hits the bat, and uh, that's our next task. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is whenever we are, uh, whenever we move the timer, we want to see if we just hit the bat, and. Uh, once again we're going to have to pay attention to our model here uh, in order for us to hit the bat the center of the ball has to be between the left end and the right end of the bat pretending that that's like a round ball the center is the part that's important so if the center of the ball is to the right of the bat's left end and to the left of the bat's right end and the ball has moved down far enough so that it is got part of the ball on top of the bat any part of the ball on top of the bat we've just hit it and when that happens we're going to take the downward velocity and reverse it to a negative value of that same thing and make it go upwards and that's how we're going to to make it bounce off the bat now um, I think we'll I think we'll do this in a separate routine down below here and I'm going to make this um, now let's put it right in the let's put it right in the timer. Okay. All right. We're going to uh, first of all need to know where the center of the ball is. So dim c as single equals ball dot left plus ball dot width over two, and that'll be the center of the ball. That's what we have to make sure is in in the boundary area. Okay. Now anytime the ball moves, we got to check several things to see if the ball is now hitting the bat. So this will be a, in the form of a long if then check for a bat hit. So if C is greater than the bat left and C is less than the bat right and okay so it's within the boundaries 
and it's moving downward, v speed is greater than zero. Okay, has to be moving downwards, and now we have to check the top and the bottom of the bat and the top and the bottom of the ball, and specifically if the bottom, if the bottom of the If the bottom edge of the bat, if the ball bottom is a bigger number than the bat top, that's one of the things that has to be true. So if the bottom edge of the ball is a bigger number than the bat top, so up here then, and ball bottom is greater than bat top, and we'd like to have it part on and part off, so we'll have to add a fourth one, and ball top is less than bat top then all right well, then we can we can reverse the direction so it will be v speed equals minus v speed and it will bounce off of the bat so that's what we need to do to get it to bounce off the bat now that's a very long if then i want to show you then a, a tool we sometimes use uh, we can break a line up without an error by using a space and an underscore and then we can actually uh, have the line split in two so the whole thing can be read. This is now one line that has been split in two by these two characters, space underscore, and that allows you to split a line in two. Okay, so there we have all that. And uh, now the other thing we need to do, and we've now got this ready to go, the other thing we need to do is if we actually do hit the bottom of the screen, we want to end the game. So we're going to change the code here for checking the bottom of the screen. Payoff for putting a note here so I remember what this does. And what we want to do is turn off the timer. So this enabled property is like the on off switch. So it says turn it off. And then we want to tell the user that they've just lost. So message box is a function that you can use here. You have to show it. And then you can put a message in here. Uh, you lose. So now we have a bat that is going to be movable and the ball can hit it and bounce off of it but if we miss the bat it will hit the bottom of the screen and the game will be over so let's see if that works so here we go we have our bat moving back and forth and when we get it under the ball it bounced off correctly it looked like it hit it at the right time now let's let the thing hit the bottom of the screen and see if we hear our, get our error message and we do and we lose now we have no way right now to restart the program but uh, that's that's the next that's one of the next steps okay now there's one more thing we'd like to do here before we quit messing around with our bat uh, we really don't have hardly any control with the bat it, it bounces off and never has any control on this um, and what we'd like to do is give the bat a kind of a the illusion of a curved top now e even though it'll be drawn with a flat top we'll give it the illusion of a curved top and uh, we'll do that in our next section have a good time bye